Hi, it's Jess here from Nigella Creates. Thank you for joining me today. So we're doing another six by six paper project. Um, this time I'm using thicker paper um, than, than the, the ones I used before. So I'm not going to back it, but I don't want the white. So we're going to add colour to the back and I'm going to make some envelopes out of these I think if I was going to make tags I think they would they're not quite thick enough for tags but I think they're perfect for an envelope and there's these sort of shrunk down versions of the paper um, which I thought might make some nice cards to go in the envelopes so those are my thoughts um, I have treated myself to some new oxide colours um, in the January sales. So I've got Gathered Twig, Old Paper, Ground Espresso, Antique Linen, Tea Dye and Frayed Burlap. These are ones that I, I hear lots of people use and I just add a bit of money left over at Christmas. So I thought, let's, let's treat myself. Um, so I'm going to be using some of these. I'm really interested to see what... Um, tea dye looks like and I'm really interested in what old paper looks like as well as antique linen. I think Grand Espresso will be too um, dark for a paper background and possibly um, gather twig maybe as well um, so I might use those on another day as well as Frey Burlack I might use on another day. You can see these are brand spanking new because they're not even open so let's get these um, slit open and used as so I got a right bargain they were four pounds something each so um, yeah I was very happy with with that and, uh, I am I, I you know with the couple that I bought um, around my birthday time um, I really like the effect that you get from the oxide so um, that's what I decided I was going to sort of build up on. And I think I've probably got all the sort of um, the ones that I want. Um, so I've got a bit of um, lining, cereal box lining. Lost my words there. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to do half actually. Do a different colour on each sort of quarter. So let's start with tea dye. Let's see. I'm going to do one separate colours. Um, so just put that down there. Let's get my water spray bottle. And give it a little bit of a, a squirt. And let's just do some smushing. So, see what we see what we get. I like a bit of yeah. it's very light, but that is what I was wanting. So I'm gonna just get my heat tool out and give that a bit of a dry so yeah that looks that looks tea dyed don't know if that's coming out when you compare that to the white and let's compare that to actual tea dye paper that's 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 pretty good it kind of is what it says on the tin it tea dyed i like that um i'm gonna just now go back in and just pick up some of these dotty bits rather than smushing i'm just dib dabbing And I'm just going to leave that to one side to dry and then we'll do the next one. So let me just, I've got 
been sorting out my paper napkins and I've got um, the bits that you don't use. So I'm going to give that a bit of a wipe off. I don't think there was enough there to warrant saving it for something. Um, so now let's try old paper. Let's see what old paper looks like. one. I do enjoy doing this. Oh, it's kind of got a bit of a green tinge to it. Pull it through. I was watching Roxy Creations this morning, um, putting together her latest journal, and she had some lots of wonderful old um, book pages as she as she does and um, yeah, some of them looked a bit greeny so I quite like that let's give that a glass yeah I am totally loving the look of that that's really nice to compare that with our tea dyed there is quite a bit of difference there love it right let's do some dib dabbing on here add some extra bits I ought to do some swatching really there leave that to dry mock this up and then we'll try antique linen I think I've got antique linen I have in the ordinary um, distress ink and I never felt that it gave much of a colour um, oh I think this might be a good matchy matchy And that wasn't planned because I just had them face down. There we go, put in that corner. Let's get this dried and we'll see what this looks like. There we go. That's, that's a nice colour. So let's have a look at the three of them. So they do give quite a different effect and actually that one's very close to that, as is that one really to be fair, just a little bit lighter. That one's a bit lighter than it than it's showing on there, but yeah, happy with those three, um, just need a little bit of dip dab in with this I'm sure they'd look wonderful together um, so we'll leave them as that so that's what I might do now I won't clean that up let's see what they look like together so we'll put a bit of antique linen bit of tea Have a bit of old paper, put it where it's not got the other. So there, got the three of them together. Give them a square each. And let's uh, do some dib dabbing. Fun. 
undesigned. So do another. I'm going to get them dried and then we'll see what we need to do to them. Right, so that one's quite well covered. We need a little bit over there, I think. Need a bit more on that one and a bit more on that one. So let's come back in with some more. And if you do enjoy messing about with inks and things, it's quite fun. Tea dime would probably be quicker, but there we go. I think you'll you'll be fine. So in my craft room decluttering, today I went through my Stampin' Up stamp sets, of which I have an embarrassing amount. And um, I have got a little pile of, I don't want anymore. I've got a pile of, I'm not sure if I'm ready to get rid of you yet. And then I've got a pile of, yeah, I, I want you. And I've sort of split them up into Christmas, Easter. Um, ones that I'd use for cards and ones that I'll use for journals. There, like that. So that is the mixed ones. And these are the done in a single colour one. Those definitely look like they're done in a single colour, but that old paper one, that could be multiple colours. I do like, I think that's my favourite, if I'm fair, but I love these. They're really good. So there's areas there that are maybe whiter than I would like. Um, I'm just going to clean this off. Um, so what I think I'm going to do is come in with a blending brush. So, um, I've got Antique Limit Distress Ink. Looks quite different. So let me let me get a brush. Use this yellowy brush. And let's put some of that on. It's really, really light to the point of thinking, have I made any difference whatsoever in that? It's really difficult to 
to see anything on there. Um, I'm going to get something white. Something white that, that was in my bin. It is, there is a colour on there, but it is really, really subtle. What have I thrown away there? Oh, yeah. I decided I didn't want that. That I've been really ruthless. So that was some packaging. And it's like, I've got so much packaging. I don't really need any more. So I think that has filled in some bits there. I don't think we're going to use that on another one for now. I'm going to just do a little spray because I do like the way that activates the ink and you get um, I just like the effect. You get you get something with it. I can't for the life of me think what. Well, Right, now then, what might I do on this? Um, I could just do some vintage photo, couldn't I? Over this, which is sat there. See what uh, this will be. Oh, a much, much darker. But I think this will complement in the background nicely. I do like getting sort of unique backgrounds and it may even be worth scanning some of these to have some background ready. I might do that. I might do some A4 sheets and scan them. They'd be quite nice. I like how that's turned out. I'm going to give that a little squirt, a little spritz over there. And we'll leave that to dry. So then on this one, I think I'm going to use something I've not used yet. Lost Shadow. I mean, it's an oxide, but... I think it might complement a bit of the uh, the antique paper, old paper even. Yep, I like that. And uh, we need to give this a squirt like the others. And then these ones that were separate, I'll just give these a little, a little spray. I like, I do like how it looks, which is why I'm doing that. And then we'll just hurry up the process with the heat gun. Okay, so that's them all. Sort of finished off. I think you've got to look close up to sort of see the effects of giving that a bit of a spray of water. I like it. So there, you can now pop these under some heavy books to flatten them because they are a little bit sort of wrinkled. So I think I'll I'll, I'll do that and then we'll um, make some envelopes with them. Okay, so they're all nice and flat now, and I have done some tea dyeing as well. So now 
we're going to make some envelopes. So I'm going to do, I think, four different styles of envelope. So I'm just going to quickly demonstrate the envelope punch board. I'm looking there for the options for 6x6 six six paper. I'm going for the 3x4 envelope. It tells me um, where to do the initial uh, punch and you punch and score and then after that you just line the score line up with the the little slanty bit that comes out and um, I just I'm just inking those edges because I can't see them and then you've got a corner rounder to um, round the fold down bit and then we just do um, some burnishing and then I like to I was just demonstrating there the, the different punches that you get um, and then I like to fold down that standy up bit. So I just use my ruler and um, fold it across like so. Um, I find the envelope punch boards really handy to have. And I think for the fact that you get two punches and um, a bone folder, um, as well as the fact that it makes envelopes, boxes, um, file folder, tabs, and bows um, it's really worth it um, I paid about 15 pounds for mine I have had it a very long time um, and um, yeah I found it one of the most used tools in my craft room but the next envelopes don't require an envelope punch board let's do one and I learnt this off the lovely Corey Darman um, I'm going to get a longer ruler because that one's not long enough so I'm going to go point to point and I'm going to draw a light pencil mark and then we need to find the intersection there as well. It's been a while since I made them. So I do forget things. So there we go, one centre point. So now that will go there and we crease that side, go there increase we fold this up I don't need the ruler gonna eyeball so you want the point on the line that's about where I want you gonna get my bone folder now And now I take the ruler and I decide where I want to do this. I'm going to bring in my board with some lines on because I want to make sure it's straight. So I want to, I'm going to have to come nearer me because I can't see up there. There we go. So there, we know we're straight on. And I'm, le I'm, I'm watching this line here, putting my ruler on that line there, and then fold these up there, and that will be folded over like that. You could fold further down, whatever you want, I quite like that, the way we've got our our things there. Now you can just notch out these corners so you can just use a pair of scissors and cut these along where they're folded. If you've got, um, you can buy a punch that punches that notch 
that you get with the envelope punch board. You could use that at this point. This is a tiny, tiny notch there. I would usually go a little bit further, but I was going by what was easier on the mat. So that's now ready and that's folding down. So you've got rid of that, that bulk in the corners and I want to round that. So you can just take an ordinary corner rounder and round that bit. And like I did before, I'm going to line my ruler up with these two points here. Fold that down. And that has got my envelope. Now another envelope, um, which requires another to draw the line. Is it similar all the way around? It's actually slightly different that one. I'm going to use this one that is the same all the way around. So I'm going to draw, draw my line. Right, so this is an origami fold. So you're going to, I've done this before, I've got a whole video of making these. I could link down below. So we're doing like a kite shape into the center there. We're going to put this point up here. It's it's up to you where you stop. I'm going to just check on here that we are straight. Yep. Fold that one, and then this needs to fold in. So what I do is. I go that way a bit, and then it will fold that way. And then we take this side here to there. This paper is actually a little bit thick for this. I would probably do this better on the thinner paper, but. I've started so I will continue. I have made this with book pages, with ledger paper, with scrapbook paper and now that bit that we've just folded in we want to fold it in on itself so it forms like um, a gusset there Like that. And then we need to fold down our envelope top there. So line this up again. I'm going to go slightly that way. So I go down. I'm going to go down that line there, I think. What I'm going to do is I want to make sure that these ends are covered so we won't do it like that. We'll do it like this. Yeah, I'll fold it down like that. It should have it straight. That'll be grand. I'm going to round that corner. Like so. And that gives you an envelope that opens out like that. And what I do is I like to um, I like to glue it so I'm going to ink down there. Get rid of the pencil line. 
think that's all the ink in apart from the bit that's on the outside and then we just get rid of this pencil line and then so glue on this flap glue down there and down that side so push the flap under And that just gives you a bit more stability in the envelope. Pull it out. That's it. Sorted. So that's that style. And then we'll have another style where I'm going to use my scoreboard if you haven't got a scoreboard you could just use a ruler and fold it but i've got a scoreboard so i'm going to use it i've got a big scoreboard i've got this little mini scoreboard so i am going to find the stylus there we go i'm going to score down here a half an inch that would give us a five inch wide envelope uh, I'm gonna go three quarters because I think five inch wide envelopes quite a lot so go in there another three quarter so That is how wide the envelope's going to be. Um, we want an envelope flap. So I think we might go one and a half inches on the envelope flap. So then we, have, we are left with, oh, can't even read those. So we've got four and a quarter so if we do two inches there, we're going to have a really long, narrow one. Finish those, finish those. So I want to take off these two side bits here. So I'm going to use my nice long scissors to cut a nice straight line and just do a little dip it there. Same on this side. Up down there, and a little dip it so that they will fold up there, glue down, and that's our, that's our flap. Coming in there, we need to round the corners. And that's a nice wide pocket. And that could, in fact, um, that envelope could be a pocket with an envelope there. Obviously, we are going to... Um, ink round and depending on where you choose to do the creases will make a difference on the, on the size and shape of your envelope. I'm just going to notch these a bit 
that's cool so we just want to glue this bit and glue that so that's giving you an envelope like that so next one let's do a coin envelope i am totally making these up now i mean making up in terms of the sizes i know how to do a coin envelope right so i'm gonna get the scoreboard back again so we know this is six inches we want the folds to overlap so if we have um so if we have a three inch wide so we can't have it three inches wide um we need to be about two and three quarters really or or, or two and um seven eighths something like that so if we do one and a half there oh, i've done it on the wrong side there. so we're going one and a half so this needs to come over a little bit more so one and a half we want an overlap so we're going to go one and three quarters so that is now our overlap by a quarter of an inch half an inch actually jez and um, that's how wide our coin envelope is going to be which is fine so we'll have We'll have a half inch coming up at the bottom and we'll have an inch, an inch and a quarter, I think, going over the bottom. There we go, so we don't need that anymore. So we'll just fold and burnish all of these. And we want to cut these two um, outside rectangles and these two outside rectangles off. So um, I'm going to cut that down as dead straight as I possibly can and I'm going to come up just slightly on the side so again cut down as dead straight as I can and come up ever so slightly and we're going to do the same on the top so come down dead straight and come down Ever slightly on the side, dead straight, and come in ever so slightly on the side. So they're ready like that, and that to go up like that. Just adjust that a tad. That's better. And the reason why I went dead straight is because I want to use my corner rounder and it would work better if we've got really, I might go on the medium one. If we've got a really nice right angle, we get a better, a better finish. So that's like that. We'll use the bigger one on the top here. And that's a nice coin envelope. We can keep our scraps. And if we ink it up, we can see it a bit better.
Oh no, we just need to do a bead of glue on the top side of that, bead of glue on the bottom side of that, and then that will fold over and go nice. And then I just do a bit of glue along the top edge of that and on the top edge of that and that's your coin envelope done nice and plain on that side for decorating and it's quite pretty on the back so I'm just going to glue these up because all the others are glued apart from this one so I may as well do it I'm aware I've got one more sheet and I'm trying to think of another envelope there we go one two three four five so we could do another one of these style. So might come in a little bit more. So if we do one and a quarter down, then I'll go in up and be about there, whatever that is there. So we'll go across there, which is, I'm going to have to measure it because I can't, which was two inches. So I went one and a quarter and I went two, which I do believe is exactly, the, oh no, I'm a little bit taller, a little bit taller than the other one. But I want to come in a bit more. So I did three quarters last time, we'll come in an inch because that'll give us a little narrower one. Yeah, that's a cute little envelope. Yeah. So just giving you little ideas of making envelopes. I'll say this is just a different style to, right. This is going to be really different because I've taken this bottom bit off and that isn't what I want us to do. So we're going to end up with that over like that. So that is going to be different. This is going to have a different look. So we'll go straight down this corner. So this is just another way of doing it. So you'll have that sort of, that sort of effect. No right and wrongs. Just a bit different. Could have left that straight and rounded the corner. You can, we could change it in all sorts of different ways. So another way of doing this would be a little notch there. So I can see where that notch was and just go diagonally to the corner. gives that effect, that shape going on, which is quite nice, this is my last, my last style of envelope. So I'm just going to put glue down these bits and then up this side here and that's that envelope done so we've got that envelope coin envelope and the long round envelope long thingy envelope so those are all the freehand ones we've got your origami envelope with that opens up that can hold quite a lot in there 
you've got the Corey envelope with the just folding the bits up and very similar is the envelope punch board one. So lots of ideas there. And then I'll say I have these, which I thought could possibly go in the envelopes. We shall see. I'm just going to cut it up. So that one matches in there. So that could go in there. Or it could be decoration on the front. Put a little mock address in there. That one again, that could decorate the front as opposed to go in. So I'm just going to trim this black one down round the corners and have that as like an address label on the front of that envelope. Um, so I'm just going through my stamps to pick out. I know I've got a French address in there. So we'll just put that on there. Um, and um, so I'm just going to use my pebble path there to um, stamp it on. And as I'm stamping, I know I'm not doing it straight, but hey ho, quite often you might write an envelope and not write it straight. So that's okay. Quick ink round. And then I think, oh, those flowers in that stamp set might actually um, look quite nice. So um, put those on the side to stick that on the front. I quite like the look of that. And um, and then we're just going to uh, glue that down. And um, then I'm going to turn to the back and think about how to um, fasten it. I was looking to see if any of the scraps were the right colour, but they're not. Uh, so I'm going to just cut a bit out of one of the other sheets. Um, I know I've got a, like a, a nice little circle there that I thought might work. So stamp that in the middle of that um, sort of journaling card one. I know it's a bit wasteful, but it's the right colour and it'll work. I might be able to use the outside for something if I die cut it in some way. So get my little punch to... Uh, punch it out. I need to just cut a sliver off to get it in the right position. So it's not completely ruined that square. I can use it for something else. And then we'll just ink round that circle and um, stick it down so we've got a nice little um, label there as a as a closure. I didn't want to cover up the, 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 the prettiness of the back of that envelope. I think that is so lovely. Um, yeah, I'm not decorating any others. The um, video's too long. Okay, so I did decorate one of the envelopes. So that is my ideas that I want to fill that up again. So we have gone through some of our six by six paper and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six envelopes. They're all made in different ways. So I do hope that's been of use to you. And they will just be nice, sitting in my stash, ready to be used at a future, future date. Quite easy things to do whilst watching telly and I am loving the way they look with this distress oxide as opposed to being just tea dyed I think you get a nice adds a little bit more interest okay I've got lots of speeding up to do because this has been quite a long time okay thanks for joining me and I'll be with you very soon with some more 6x6 paper ideas. Bye for now.